Welcome to Perspectives with Catherine Toon. And I have a new friend that I've known for a long time that it feels like I have known Rod forever. Welcome, Rod Williams. I'm so excited to have you. Oh, glad to be here. It's good to meet you. I've known you online for a while as well. So it's really good to be able to chat and get to know each other. Absolutely. And and I, I heard of and met and heard things about and saw expressions of Rod through Cana New Wine Seminary. That's, uh, that's part of John Crowder and et al. Uh, what, a, what a great gift. And Rod, you're a gift. And I, I've been, we've been chatting. And we're like, oh my goodness, we might want to record this because this is so good. <laughs> but we are going to talk about the gospel today, the true gospel. But, you know, before we get there, I was enjoying your story and I thought, oh my goodness, Please share your story because I think if I'm enjoying it, I know it's going to blow other people away. So just feel free to take it. We'll just flow and it'll be fun. Okay. Well, we were, we were talking about, you know, we enjoy some really awesome fellowship and friendships these days. A lot of different streams are coming together. But uh, when I, when I started out, it wasn't that way. You were kind of a certain denomination, you know, and you, you tended to believe what that, that group believed because you just didn't know any better in general. So I was sharing with her that um, I was born in the South, um, but moved to California when I was about 12. In the South, I was exposed maybe to um, a small, you know, Methodist church. And I remember going as a child. And one of the funny things I remember is a lot of the buildings back then had used to have wood fired stoves, you know, the metal stoves, and then they got better heating. So they would just plug up that hole and take the stove out. And there was this popular thing to cover up that hole that had the face of Jesus on it, you know? And so I can remember (laughs) as a kid looking up and going, wow, there's Jesus right up at the corner there, you know, and it was just the old hole where the, the stack the cover. Yeah, so covered up. So anyway, so that's one of my early, and then then people would have these fans. You know, John has them. He he sells them at his uh, at his meetings. Yes, he does, and he does sell them. They're so funny. I have one. Yeah. You have one. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I remember one. those for real. You know, because it was hot, and people would be waving them. So really, the best picture I got of Jesus in those days was a picture of Jesus, really. But it was a good picture, you know. He, he seemed happy. He seemed friendly. So, so that was that was happy, all. friendly God. Who, yay! That's yeah, awesome. So then we we come to California and a totally different culture, you know. And that w- it was tough being a kid with a southern accent, you know, in Southern California. Um, but anyway, so someone invited us to the small fundamental church, and um, I was sharing that what they were saying. I didn't really understand, you know, I was, I was probably, I was early teens, but there was uh, one guy there who was filled with so much love and there was light in his eyes. And, um, he's probably, uh, we were joking about him being a closet charismatic. He was probably getting drunk in the Holy ghost and, and, and it wasn't allowed, you know, cause they were cessationists. This church was a cessationist church. And none of that stuff's supposed to happen anymore. But anyway, he basically loved me into relationship with God. You know, I was like, uh, that whatever he's go- going on with him sounds pretty good. So I got involved, real active, served youth group and all that stuff. And um, um, I was involved in uh, the forensic club in high school, going out and speaking and debating and all that. And so... Uh, when I became quote serious about Jesus, um, I was interested in technology. I did electronics as a hobby when I was a child, but when I became serious about Jesus, they were like, well, you, you know, if you can sing, you could do music ministry. Uh, if you want to travel, you could, you could be a missionary, but you probably should be a pastor, you know? So, uh, and, and there was the sacred, Three options. Yeah, that was the only option. So there's the sacred and the secular. So, so mm-hmm. what I was doing in technology, didn't seem like 
you know, that wasn't serving God, you That's know. not which, a Jesus thing. Yeah, not a Jesus thing. So now I look back on it, I go, well, that was not, not a good good choice. Well, anyway, so I um, I went to Bible college, you know, did did well, good little Pharisee. I had all the, the five-point sermons down, you know, and I could do, do, it. do the, yeah, well, we, we were Calvinists, but we not that Calvinist, you know what I mean? We had a slightly okay. better God than most of them. You, you twist it was a little Yeah, a little, little better. But um, okay. so anyway, I, I, I went to Bible college, did well, and got drafted by a big church, you know, and I was so proud. And I went to work at this church back in back in Detroit. You made it. Yeah, exactly. I'm on my way, you know. And, um, and then some things happened there. Uh, I won't go into, but it was, there were some things that were very discouraging in, in how that it operated, who we could include and who we could bring to church, stuff like that. So I said, I don't know much, but I don't think that's you, Jesus. So I, so I quit, you know, and uh, it's uh, as an aside, there was another guy on staff there uh, with me and he'd been looking for me for a long time. And he saw he, he had been exposed to Paul Young, right, who he hated because he was a heretic. And uh, he heard him preach one time. Somebody tricked him and brought him to a meeting where Paul was preaching, right? And um, he he uh, just, you know, was weeping, feeling the love of God, and knowing that God was better than we were taught back then. So anyway, he saw a picture somewhere. I guess I was with Paul or Baxter or somebody. So he comes to Baxter's he goes, wow, there, you know, there he has been looking for him. And um, we're a tiny little denomination, you know. And uh, so anyway, he shows up at one of Baxter's meetings and I reconnected with him about two years ago. And, oh, and we were having wow, we, were, we were having communion together. And it was so sweet because, you know, we just we have the shared history and growing over time to understand the goodness of God better. And so wow. when I left that church, uh my, my first big job in my twenties, I came back to California and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've, I've made this my career. I, I've got to make a living now. So I, I got back into technology through a friend and this was the early days of small computers, microcomputers, Apple, and all those guys. And I learned to program and I developed a career in computing for about 30 years. And wow. while I was, wow. when I just came back, I had a friend who, worked with me on these ancient technology. Nobody would even know what these are, but these were early word processors we were working on. And um, he had an unusual story. He and his wife got, they had zero background in church, but they read the Bible. They were into all the weird mysticism stuff and dark things. And they said, well, we should, maybe we should just read the Bible just so we can check that off and be able to criticize it, you know? So they, <laughs> so they, they read the Bible and all of a sudden they get whatever born again is, they got it right. And they, Dang. and they fell in love with Jesus. And they're like, well, it says oh. here, we should go to church. Well, we don't know any churches. Where do we go? You know? So Calvary chapel was huge in Costa Mesa. This was like the latter part of the Jesus movement, the mid seventies. Wow. And um, so they were going there and he just talked about it so positively and that I, I see now the spirit of God was on him. You know, we became friends and studied the Bible together. He invited me to go there. And uh, of course, I, I, I thought, you know, these guys are heretics because we thought we were cessationists in my little fundamental group. And, you know, if you speak in tongues, you're going to lose your mind. And, you know, God doesn't heal or do anything anymore. Humans, but what, doesn't exist. But when I got never. there, man, the music was great. You know, <laughs> they, had, they, had, <laughs> they had Maranatha music and the guitars and drums and yeah. stuff like the yeah. rock, like the rock and roll we weren't supposed to listen to, but we were listening to anyway. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it, and, you know, there were guys, uh, all the young Calvary pastors were there. And of course, Chuck and, uh, and Lonnie Frisbee and those guys, and they would have these big Saturday wow. night meetings and you just feel the presence of God. People would run forward. You know, I look now and I'm not sure I would agree with the theology, but man, the spirit of God was all over it, you know, and people were. Don't you love it? Like God, just yeah, whatever you're, th I'm just going to love you. It's just all good. Yeah. Right. You know, regardless yeah. of, I mean, this is good because 
when we arrive, we'll come find each other. But I, you know, with a theology, but anyway, keep going. Exactly. <laughs> so, so this loosened me up and, and me and him, uh, he and I, or whatever the right English is there, <laughs> we, we uh, decided to work, uh, answer the phones on the prayer ministry, right? So we got the really fun shift, which was like midnight to 5 a.m. And oh, uh, let wow. me tell you, in Southern California, Calvary Chapel, you get some unusual calls between midnight and five. <laughs> I'm a retired physician, so I used to be in the ERs during those times. Oh, so I know what comes in. Yep, yeah. So right, yeah. all of that. Well, but just yeah, before go they go to the ER, sometimes they call. They call. Right, they, they called you and you sent them to me. Thanks, bro. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we, 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 we had you. fun together. We learned and we grew, you know, and then. Yeah, that, that is a rapid course in growth. Yes. Right. Boom. You're being baptized. Boom. There it is. Okay. Yeah. And we had we had a little house church. Uh, I'm not sure how it started. It just started. We had friends, you know, and um, and uh, oh, one 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 key to that was I was working somewhere and my my I, don't you love it when God just goes around you sometimes because. I had given up. I had, I had given up on ever sharing the gospel again. But I had gotten. I got this job uh, in uh, doing the electrical systems and later in the computer department. And um, I did. I said, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm a Christian ever again. I'm just done, you know. And and uh, so one day my boss comes to me. He's a beautiful guy, you know. He was a West Point graduate and had a lot of military experience. He was a great manager. I learned a lot from him. But one day he comes in and goes, Rod, <clears throat> I think I need to ask. I, I need a relationship with God. I need to ask. And I've said nothing to the guy. He just says, he says, I think. I, Let me set this up for you, honey. This I think, is, I, think I, I think I need, help you along here. Yeah, I need to, I need to invite Jesus into my life because I don't know what that means. And I said, well, why are you talking to me? Cause I hadn't said anything. He goes, well, I know you're a Christian. It's okay. Uh, you know, and, uh, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. I said, I said, well, do you want me to pray with you? You know I mean? Kind of on the spot. And he goes, he says, you know, I think I know what I need to do. Just leave me alone in my office for a minute and I'll take care of it. You know, He's a <laughs> military guy, you know, so sure enough, he gets saved <laughs> and he starts reading his Bible. And then he says, um, you know, um, it says here they discipled one another. I want you to disciple me. <laughs> and I'm oh like, my God. and I'm like, wow. I, I'm not in that mode at all because I've kind of given up on everything. How do you spell disciple? La la la. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, so we started meeting and it was, it was, I mean, I see now the spirit was all over it, but even though I didn't believe that much in the spirit at the time. And he went to he went to Calvary with us. Anyway, we wound up starting this home group, and it, it grew. And then then some people wanted to get baptized, and so in the, being from the group I was in, well, I had to get permission and all this stuff to do that. And so I I went to to Calvary, and got an appointment with um, I think his name was Raul. He was like Chuck Smith's right hand guy, and he was a totally different personality than than Chuck. If anybody knows the history there, he was kind of gruff, kind of a curmudgeon sort of guy. So finally I get to meeting with him and I tell him my story. I said, look, we've been doing this home group and I don't know how to officially sign up to be a Calvary home group and everything, you know, and, uh, and, and we need, they want to be baptized. And so I like, where's the, do I have to fill out some paperwork or what, what do we have to do here? And he just laughed and he goes, there's nothing to join here. Let me get this straight. You, you, you been teaching some folks and they want to get baptized. I go, yeah. He goes, he just laughed. He goes, what's the problem? And he walked off and that was the end of that. So we, we just went down to the beach and had some baptisms, you know? And, uh, so that was, you're, you're reminding me of some things I hadn't thought about in a while. So we did that and we wound up at uh, vineyard for a while and we wound up, um, my life bottoming out, which is a whole nother story <laughs> and getting ill for a while. And, Anyway, eventually I became a, a single parent and um, I was putting my life back together and uh, I, I was working a lot of hours at a large tech company. Uh, I left out a whole stretch in there where I became a consultant, developed software and, you know, 
had had a career. Wow, Rod. Yeah. So anyway, I did that for about Great. about thirty yeah. years, and um, but I, my life had bottomed out, and I was working at this big company, lots of hours. The, the nine eleven happened. There was a lot of pressure on us to get a lot of things done, and right. um, so I, um, I I said I was starting to kind of go a little nuts, you know, because I had three teenage boys that I was trying to raise. Wow while doing this job. So I said, you know what? I need to talk to some adults and everybody who's ever been a single parent knows what I'm talking about. So I got to get out of here and go talk to some humans, you know, some adults. So I went to like a single parenting class and, uh, and um, they were very helpful. And then uh, in the course of that, I met my wife, Eileen, who was teaching another course at, at, at this church and, and then we had a friend who was going to, and she saved my life. I should say that because she really did. Um, but because I was, super, yeah, I, mean, I was so stressed yeah. out and um, mm-hmm. didn't understand a lot of things about life. Let's just put it that way. Um, but she and I were invited by a friend to a small charismatic church, and we. Uh, you know, we had some issues going on, not in our marriage, but relations with other family members and things. And there were some very accurate prophetic words, which I didn't even believe in, you know, but they, it was very helpful. And then we Things began stop, to, didn't they? Yeah. We okay. began to have some encounters with Holy Spirit. Um, and being a good cessationist, I argued with God about all of that being real. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just share one little story. Uh, we were in we we're in a meeting one time, and people are like, "Oh, there's a waterfall of God's grace in the room," you know, and they're getting all charismatic on me, and uh, they're falling down, and I'm like, "I ain't falling down. That's just stupid," you know. And I can do it. I, I can do it. Not gonna do it. Next thing I know, I'm on the ground, of course. Of uh, course. And uh, and I feel like something flowing over me, and I'm like, "This is just." you know, like a mass hypnosis. Anyway, I had all hysteria. hysteria. There you go. I had all the, I had all the explanation, but I was feeling it. And, and, and I felt Jesus say to me, Rod, remember when I said I was the bread of life and I was the good shepherd and I was the living water. I love metaphors. I use metaphors. This is just a metaphor. Get over it. You know, (laughs) Whoa! I love it. Frying pan ministry right there. It's, I love metaphors. It's just a metaphor. Get over it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So we had a yes. few more incidents like that. And uh, <laughs> I would leave sometimes uh, swearing I would never go back. You know, I, I, I really needed prayer one time. And the pastor went, came to pray for me. And he had a fit of holy laughter. And he never got a single word out. And I was very offended because I was, I'm in trouble. I need prayer. And I was like, Lord. And you're laughing. Uh, you're laughing. That demonic you're not, laugh of yours. You're yes. not taking this seriously, you know? Yes. And and the Lord said, Rod, right, if there's ever anybody needed to be laughed over in prayer, it's you, dude. You have such a stick up your butt. Just like lighten up, <laughs> will you? And exactly. Oh my God. So anyway, this Whoa. was my conversation so, with. So, uh, let me just stop you for a second. Yeah. So Jesus actually said, "Stick up your butt." I'm just getting this for the record. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I love you because we have so many people. God, let deliver us from our sticks up our butts. Yeah. Seriously, we need freedom. We need laughter, yeah. and you're loving us. And this mm-hmm. is the way to. Like, I love how He spoke to you in all these cases because there's right on. It's what you needed. Right. It's what, so because he is always what we need where we're at. So if we've got to stick up our butt and just need to have a sticky ectomy, he is the one, right, to like like beat us over the head or maybe he'll dissolve it. I don't know what he'll do, whatever, he, but whatever we need. And the relational way that he just, I just have to highlight and enjoy this, the relational way, like, I, we could have done 500 different ways, but that was the way you needed. So that's where he met you. That's what it's I beautiful. needed. What a beautiful God. Because I, I was so serious. You know, I was, I was an engineer at the time and doing all this tech, tech stuff, you know, and um, working really hard, you know. And anyway, I just, God just showed, showed me a whole different yeah. side of him, right? And mm-hmm. and Bar- Baxter calls it being embarrassed in a family way, you know, like 
Holy Spirit will oh. do that, you know, where where it's, yes. it's someone has to know you well to embarrass you. Yeah, to embarrass you in a family way. Right. Or have because your family. Have a you know, a shared uh, experience or something that you could kind of kid each other about, you know. Mm-hmm. And so so Holy Spirit did that. Um, I'll share one more from that time because we were in prayer and there were these ladies praying for someone who was going through something very difficult. And they asked me to join the prayer thing and they were, they, they were speaking in tongues. And I, I, I was like, Oh, there's no interpretation. No, I, was, I was just judging it. <laughs> My God, we're damned. We're damned. I was not, we're out of order. We're out of order. I, exactly. You know, I, and, <laughs> and and the holy the holy spirit says, oh god, we really are seriously we're so oh my gosh like give it up like we uh, panties in a wad it's, isn't it funny how we are but we're just loved in our panties in a wad to stick stuff our butts or whatever oh, we are yeah i mean that's probably not the best analogy to share but that's i love it that's, that's, you talk to a doctor so this this actually works i, I got the anatomy we're good yeah. we just be free I'm, well, a, I'm a happy little drunk doctor so it's all good in the spirit we're good. So anyway, the um, they were praying for this person, and I was getting offended. And oh, sorry, I, you know, it's just I was offended so many times. It's it's hilarious now, but but so the Holy Spirit says, "Oh, you need an interpretation rod," and it's like a switch flipped, and all of a sudden I could understand everything everybody was saying. And and it was the most beautiful, caring, loving, intercessory kind of thing it was just beautiful and then and then it just flipped off and it was and and the holy spirit said what was that was was that enough of an interpretation for you and i'm like that i didn't say anything and I, I i got to where when those that would happen i was like i don't think i can explain this away as hallucinating or anything else i think this something's really going on here you know so we, i had a period of encounters like that and it started to heal some things in me, you know, and, of course it did. and eventually we got, we started going up to Bethel and made some connections up there and people invited. Bethel. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Invited. The non-cessationist laughing, happy people. Bethel. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and God went out of his way to connect me with really drunk people up there. And, uh, um, like Joaquin Evans and, I love Joaquin. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. And people like that. And they were so kind to us and they would come down. And so then, um, we, we, um, we met John, well, we met George and Van Off and Winnie, and we went to a lot of their things. Then we met John. We pastored a church that John John Crowder John Crowder started in Santa Cruz for about five years. And, um, we had a lot of great, people come through there and we, we invited Francois and he came out and, and uh, Steve uh, McVeigh and uh, the, uh, Andre Marianne Rabe and uh, oh my gosh, all yes. these, all these different people. Wow. You guys are rocking and rolling. That yeah. Dan awesome. McCollum and um, from the mission in Vacaville. Anyway, we had a wonderful period there and then Kana came up and uh, uh, we, we did the Cana thing for two years, and then our, a new church started in our town. When we left, we were going to be gone for the summer, so we said, "Look, if you if you can find a place, find a place." Because we were always kind of this monthly conference, you know, because it was kind of started with John, and uh, and we had in speakers. Wow. But our our the core group uh, at home was, um, you know, gosh. Five, ten, thirty, forty people, depending on what what it was. Oh so, wow! So I was like, Lord, you you want this to continue? At this point, John had moved to Portland. We were running it. Yeah, I remember that. And so mm-hmm. I said, Hey, everybody, go find a church <laughs> if you can find one. And if Scatter, and if you're here one. when we get back, make from, one. Make one. If you're here, be when one. We get, or make one. Yeah. And if we get yeah. if you're here when we get back from the summer, then we'll see what happens. So we came back. <laughs> we came back. <laughs> Sorry. And, that's, so, um, that's so free. Okay, so yeah, okay. scatter them. You know, like Jerusalem yeah, got yeah. scattered. Right? Like seeds. Oh my goodness! Sounds like something. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Well, anyway, so there, there was a pastor in town who was at one of the bigger churches, and he just had this radical encounter with the Holy Ghost that had absolutely nothing to do with with me or anybody in our church, but it was pretty dramatic. And so he ran into some of our folks, and they were like, "Oh, you know, we can help you." And 
And then uh, some other friends who are part of our church, uh, who were also, you know, had a lot of connections at Bethel, they decided to start a church in Monterey. And so between those those two things, yeah, everybody found a home. It was beautiful. So many of them are still there to this day. And and we started doing more traveling and and uh, doing meetings and things like that. And uh, you know, was that when you say we, you're talking about you and Eileen, or the, you and John, or me, you? me and Eileen? Sometimes with nice. John, sometimes on our own. We we did some tours in uh, Australia and, and uh, South Africa in 2016 and the UK. And, you know, just, I don't know, God began to open some doors and do some things. And what we still love to do, do things together. John's obviously been an amazing uh, friend and mentor. And uh, no kidding. We, we got to know, we got to know Baxter a couple of years before through a mutual friend that Baxter and I have named Ken Blue. And uh, so I, I will help bring, uh, uh, you know, Baxter and Francois and I became friends. Anyway, I brought my friends into Cana. John brought his and it became this thing. And God bless John. John gets things done and he's great vision and um, I'm grateful for that and grateful for Baxter. And and now that they're more connected, we're all more connected and we, we're, we're doing amazing things. So if you, if you yes, didn't you get a chance to be part of that Holy Spirit course, the videos are just awesome because we we each teach and then the three of us had a discussion at the end and then we took questions and it just wound up being just a really sweet time. Um, wow. So that's that's what now, where can one because I didn't get to make it. Where where can one get recordings? Where can Catherine get a recording? Um, you can go to that? John's uh, website okay. at the newmystics.com okay, dot org. I think it is newmystics.org. Yes. It and is, yeah, dot org. Dot, 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 yeah. dot org, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or John Crowder dot net. And, dot net. Yes. and okay. I think you can still sign up for that. And he has some other great courses. And then Baxter he has a lot of great courses. Baxter has uh, an introduction to the Trinitarian faith course that's fantastic. Uh, okay. and he, he's going through the book of John uh, once one night a month. And you can wow. sign up for that on it's called Across All Worlds on his Patreon thing. And um, and uh Anyway, those those are great resources for people to grow in the gospel. Also, GAN TV. Um, of which, yeah, Rod Williams is doing his thing. I'm doing my thing too, but yeah. I mean, Rod's doing his thing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on there. John's on there. Baxter, a lot of our friends. It's a long list. Yeah, um, it is. And so, anyway, there's there's a lot going on in in the gospel, and um, when we uh, when we talked about this, uh, we, we talked about, I, I gave you some topics. We talked about what, what is the gospel, you know, and yeah. in light of that history, um, yeah. the way I see the gospel now is number one, number one thing missing <clears throat> was Jesus being the center, staying focused on that relationship, the simplicity of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, um, Somehow we lost that, you know, the, the gospel uh, is not a proposition that could be true if you do something to make it okay, right? Exactly. If you make it, to make it true, the gospel is a declaration of what Jesus has already made true without your permission. Uh, and I love that. Without your permission. There are times when a good parent is like, yeah, we're doing this because that's what his kids need. Right. And so, right. So I love that without, sorry, I just got excited. It's so good. <laughs> no, it, it, it's okay. And and I don't buy that. I don't mean we don't participate and we don't receive. Mm -hmm. We absolutely do. But you can only receive what is already true. So for example, when there's a wedding proposal and the bride to be says, yes, to the expression of love and invitation to marriage of the groom, her saying yes does not create the love that caused the proposal. No. The love was there and she's responding to the love and saying yes. So our receiving Jesus is our ecstatic yes to his proposal of love and relationship and intimacy. It's always been there from the foundation of the world. 
It's just we we have forgotten it, right? So the first thing about the gospel, what it's not, is it's not a proposition. It's the punctuation of the gospel is not a question mark. It's an exclamation point. So we declare um, what Jesus has done. So the, the, I like to summarize it in four points. The gospel is who Jesus is, mm. what he accomplished, mm. who we are in him, and how we view others in light of that good news. So the gospel is much more expansive than what we were told. What we were told was really an atonement theory, and then that was passed off as the gospel. And not even a good atonement theory, but it was penal substitution theory, theory of atonement, or PSA. Yeah. And right. the, the, the essence of that is that the, the not good news, the, the um, evangelical gospel of the West, is really a, a retelling of the lie in the garden. Uh, mm. that was given to, to Adam and Eve. The lie in the garden was, you're not like God. It was embedded in the, but if you do this thing, if you eat of this, then you can become like God. And then there was the question of, has God said, which in, is subtly indicating that God is not good. He's not for you. He hasn't revealed what you need. And he's holding out on you. He's holding yeah. out on you, right? Mm. Now, yeah. the modern gospel is, um, you're you're separated from God. God is holy, and you're not. So you're not like God. Mm. And He's out there, and you're here. There's separation between you and Him because He's so holy, He can't be in your presence. Um, mm. The most true thing about God is that He's holy, and can't be in the presence of sin. It's not love. It's mm. that He's mm. He's really a judge, mm. right? Not he's the judge. Father. And He's an angry judge. And He's an angry <laughs> judge, and He has wrath because you're you're a dirty rotten sinner. So, but the good news is, if you say this magic prayer, then you, you will change the nature of God from judge to father. And Jesus, who is, in fact, everywhere except you, will now magically jump inside of you and you'll jump inside. Or except him. those people that didn't say the magic prayer. Right. They're all out now. Yes. yes. Um, so that's the not good news. That, so that theory of atonement was is presented as the gospel. And then we wonder why people don't want to have intimacy with the Father, right? We can preach intimacy with the Father all day long and the goodness of the Father. But when you started out with, he, he basically is so separated from you and he needs blood, he needs a sacrifice, and he has to kill his own kid to be okay with you, then... And beat the crap out of him. And, you, yeah, yeah, not right, just not right, just right. kill him, not just slit the throat yeah. like a sacrificial lamb, but actually right, torture right. him. You see, Allay him. That's where him. that's that's at the core of our problems in the church. Wow. Because, wow. but see, Athanasius in the beginning said the God of all is good and supremely noble by nature. Therefore, he is the lover of the human race. You see, that's what the early fathers saw. Yeah. They saw that Jesus was fully God and fully man, homosios to patre, the hypostatic union, which gives us the Nicene Creed. They stood up against Arianism of the day, which modern evangelicalism is a form of Arianism in which Jesus is not quite fully God. You see, we can have a God who can't be in the presence of sin, or we can have Jesus be God, but we can't have both. That makes right. sense. Right. Absolutely makes because sense. Jesus went out of his way to be in the presence of sin. He dined with right. sinners. He exactly. visited the woman at the well. He dismissed the accusers of the woman caught in adultery. He was doing that so much so that they said he's a friend of sinners. And yet we, and that was an accusation. It's yes. like, hell yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody corrected me online one time. Well, they just said he was a friend of sinners. You know, he wasn't really. He, he was there passing out four spiritual laws tracts. And, and uh, given altar calls at Zacchaeus' house when they had dinner, I'm sure of that. You know. Here's a loophole, because God can't possibly be good. <laughs> exactly. He can't possibly love those dang sinners. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? Boom. Romans 5, 8. So the, the scripture doesn't support that. But So the first thing about the gospel is who Jesus is. Jesus is not a little stick figure that you walk on to get to the real God. Jesus is God. 
all things were made by him. Nothing was made without him. The first five chapters, uh, first five verses of John chapter one. So Jesus is fully God. He's eternal. He's the visible expression of the invisible God, it says in Colossians. So the first thing we have to see and declare is that Jesus is God. We're all in evangelicalism. We, we want to give an altar call and get Jesus into you and you into Jesus, but we can't be bothered to describe who Jesus is. It's very important that are you believing in an Aryan Jesus who's a little less than God, who's a special creation for the purpose of sacrifice? Are, are you are you got a Mormon Jesus who's the brother of Satan? You know, who's which Jesus are you believing in? Well, the Jesus of the Bible and the gospel is fully God, fully man. He, nothing of God was left out of Jesus. Nothing of man was left out of Jesus. All of God, all of man met in the person of Jesus Christ. What happened to the creator happened to creation. So when he died, we died. When he rose, we rose. When he ascended, we ascended. Jesus accomplished that, you see. So first we have to have a vision of who Jesus is. And he's not that little stick figure in the four spiritual laws track. He's not something you walk on. He's something, he's someone who comes to get you, right? He, he, uh, he's not a club you join. He's someone who to join to be right. So you have bragging rights about being, having right doctrine. He's someone who comes his, alongside of now you. Now we're in and you're out. Yeah, yeah. So comes not, not in and out, but he comes alongside you when you're completely wrong. Yeah. Right? The paracletos. When do we need a savior most? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is fully God. Nothing of God's left out of him. In fact, all creation is in him. That's how big he is. Yep. That's yes. how spacious he is. And That's how he occupies all the space. I just had to do a, a John Crowder right there. He occupies all the space. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. right. You don't get that much privacy, John would say, right? And so Yes, exactly. Um let me let me just read something from Colossians one here in the message. Ooh. We look oh, at this great. sun. <laughs> this gets me drunk. We look at this sun and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. That's Jesus. That's, that's the, the that was Colossians. I'm sorry. I'm so drunk on this. Colossians, Colossians. one, um, 15 to 20, um, in the message translation. Message. It's also okay. good. I like also the Phillips and some others. Um, the Phillips, it says he is therefore justly called the Lord of all, you know, and so we have to get that vision of Jesus and it takes a little time to do that, but we're so busy trying to get people to do things. We don't realize that real faith is beholding the faith of Jesus in us when we had none. And then his faith arises in us and becomes genuine faith. There's only one faith and that's the faith of the son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. That's real faith. So if we behold Jesus, uh, the gospel is who Jesus is and declaring that strongly. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the cosmos to himself, not counting men's sins against us and has given him, given us the ministry of reconciliation. So that's what Jesus accomplished. Jesus accomplished so many things. He accomplished our reconciliation to God by himself which included the father. No one comes to me except the father draw him. Don't, uh, you didn't choose me. I chose you. 
He took the initiative in the relationship. He reconciled us. Whatever definition of distance you have was canceled in Christ. The, the, whatever veil of separation was torn in two, top to bottom, inside out, once for all in Jesus. So he accomplished that. Yeah. He accomplished yeah. union. He accomplished zero distance, full time, no separation, union. You're in him, he's in you. He said, in that day, you'll know I'm in the father, the father's in me and I'm in you. So where is the father then? The father's in you. And wherever Jesus and the father are, the Holy Spirit is, they don't travel separately. So Jesus accomplished our union with God, right? Whatever you want to define salvation as, uh, there's many definitions. Jesus accomplished that. That's part of the gospel. How masterful is he as a savior? How, how masterful is he? Come yeah. on, come on. Just, and then I'll start preaching, but I don't want to, I just want you to keep on going. So I'm <laughs> so, sorry. I, you know, I get, I'll get to preaching. So if you have a question, or something, no, no, please. it's great. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Don't stop. Yeah. Keep on going. So thirdly, <clears throat> who we are in him is part of the gospel. Mm. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, but friends, not, not slaves, but sons. And so religion has you as a, a slave or a servant, but Jesus makes you a part of the family. And you know the family business and what's the family business, declaring to every man you are reconciled by God to himself, past tense, so you can live reconciled, present tense. And people will hear that and they'll say, well, you're saying that you don't, you don't have to believe. Well, no, this is why you can believe. You see, you can only believe something that's true. You don't make it true by your belief. Just like the bride doesn't make somebody love her because she says yes to the proposal, right? That's you're wow. just you're just responding, right? Gold doesn't become gold because you found it. It's always been gold. It's just you found it, and then now it's your gold. And it's of value to you. So so we have gotten this all wrong. We have we we act like the death of Jesus was in some escrow account, and then we <clears throat> we have to say a magic prayer to get it out of escrow and cash the check and make make it all, uh, make it ours, right? But no, he, what, how many times did Jesus die? He died once. Who did he die for? He died for all men. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. There's the gospel in Timothy there. Is, um, he's the Savior of all men. He did everything that's necessary for all people. So absolutely participate. Choose Jesus, choose relationship, but realize you can only choose him because he chose you. There's no bragging about changing God's mind. It's his kindness that leads us to metanoia, to change our mind. We love him because he first loved us. So we have to tap out to all bragging and all doctrinal uh, shenanigans. And we just have to say, look, he did it all. We're just believing what he did. The, the prodigal son uh, never stopped being a f son of the father's house. He just forgot who he was and where he was. But when he got tired of his pig pen, he came home to find that he had always been a son of the father's house. And I love that because, yes. Go, go ahead. Sorry. I love that because a God is like, yeah, yeah. Because so he starts off with a servant slave. Let me be the servant. like, la, la, la. He's not even listening to him. He's like, putting the robe on, bringing the shoes, putting the fat, get the fatted calf going. We're partying while well, he's trying to get, the, no, I'm not going to, I don't listen to this. This is like, this is like white noise, not happening. You're my son. Yes. And you, you didn't choose to be my son. You're just my son because I'm yeah. your father. And you can not change that. Yeah. You could just be blind to it. I'm sorry. Just a happy dance right there. But keep going. <laughs> no, no, no. This, we, we, we should be having more of a conversation, but I get to preaching, you know, so I'm, enjo I'm enjoying it. So like, I, I'm serious. I'm doing calisthenics. I'm burning up a lot of calories. This is great. I'm going to have a piece of cake or something afterwards. Cause I'm, I'm Halloween and all. So no, this is just happy dance. So just keep going, just keep it flowing. Keep so, it going. It's great. So <laughs> when did your, if you have children, when did your children invite you into their life? <laughs> Oh my God, we are so silly. You see what like, I mean? You see what I mean? You don't make God your yeah. father by your choice or, or your yeah. earthly father by your choice. He made you a son or daughter by his choice. And so we have, Paul says, I bow my knee before the father in heaven from whom every family on earth derives their name. That's Ephesians 3.15. Every, every, 
So every means all. So if there is a human being, that means you're in. That's it. That's it. Now you may not, you may live like a child of the devil because you don't know. Oh, yeah, and Lord, yeah. Lord knows There's people say, well, why preach the gospel? <clears throat> well, because people don't know and the world is a mess. If you haven't noticed. We need to wake up. Yeah. So we got to wake up. But you see, once you mm -hmm. see that Christ is all in all, there's no male, female, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all in all. Then you begin to see that all these lines we've drawn between us and somebody else uh, are not real. We draw lines, Holy Spirit draws a circle, and everybody's in that circle. Everybody's in the family of God. We belong. We batter, you see. So in them, we have complete union, and we have distinction. We belong, and we matter. Each of us has unique value. We were in the mind of Christ when he spoke the world into existence. Our DNA, our eye color, our gifting, our voice, our smile, everything was, was seen. That's why I think when Jesus went to the sinners and he designed it, he, he dined at Zacchaeus' house, we have this uh, family recognition when we see someone that we love and we look them in the eyes and we feel that joy and we remember all the things about them. Imagine just looking in Jesus' eyes and imagine we, we love the presence. We love, we call it the wax sometimes. Imagine the presence. <laughs> he was the presence. He is God, right? Literally in your midst. Imagine the whack on Jesus, you know? Oh my. <laughs> and it was see, in the flesh. In the flesh. <laughs> Oh and man, when he looked at anyone, there was a look of recognition. I've known you from before the foundation of the world because I made you. You began as an original thought in the mind of God. So you really are a big deal, you know. And Jesus. And you're his expression, right? You're an it's expression. It's pursuit. It's just, it's not a cerebral thought. It's a, it's an inspired, <sighs> my son, my daughter, right? And so. There's this pursuit. There's this pursuit. There's until we wake up, till we wake up, till we wake up yes. to what's always been true. Yeah. Right. Holy, Sorry. Holy Spirit. I had to a little bit. Holy Spirit is pursuing everyone every day. Just today, the day they're going to look back. And what you begin to see when you really talk to people without putting them on the other side of a line and projecting your bad theology on them is you begin to see everybody's had encounters with God and yes. everybody's had insights that they knew were better than themselves. You know, everybody, mm, everybody's yeah. had a word of wisdom. They've had a word of knowledge, you know, they don't know how, um, but, and they don't know what it is, but they've had it exactly. right? a lot of times. Right. And, and they, I, there's a, um, a biologist in the UK and he, um, he studies connections between people. And, um, one of the things he does is he'll have people who are not believers studying biology. He'll have them close their eyes and say, how many of you have ever felt a presence greater than yourself? And he says about 90% yeah, of language. Yeah. 90% yeah. of people will raise their hands. So uh, he's, he calls himself an anatheist. He was started out as a Christian, uh, went to Eastern religion and became an atheist. And then he came back around and said, you know, there is a God, you know, and, uh, but he's a, he's what a, a well-respected biologist. I, I hope to connect with him someday because he has some fascinating research he's done. That's, but, um, that's, so that's who really Jesus fun. is, what Jesus accomplished, who we are in him. And we have to see that we're not sinners saved by grace. We're not in by the skin of our teeth. We're not behind a cardboard cut out of Jesus, hoping that, that we never peek out and Jesus and God sees who we oh, really are. Jesus. You see? We, yeah. we, we don't have rose cut. The father doesn't have a uh, rose colored glasses fashioned from the blood of Jesus to pretend you're something. It's not an imputation. It's, it's an adoption. You know, it's a whole different thing. So, so that's who we are in Jesus. We're in, we belong. And we just have to learn to deal with it because of all the voices of shame and, and um, not measuring up and all the stuff that we have in this world. Now, once we've seen who Jesus is, what he accomplished, who we are in him, then we can begin to see others in light of that good news. And we don't see separation. We see everybody as being included in the love of God, you see. So in religion, the people who don't believe the way you do are 
out there somewhere, not connected with God. And you're connected with God and you've got the bragging rights. And, and when that gets bad enough, you can go kill people in Jesus' name or God's name or Allah's name or somebody's name because they're just, you know, they're, they're not real humans, right? So religion and politics are related spirits. And the, the what a time. Preach it, Rod. So it keeps going. What a time for the U S right. We're in the middle of an election. We're, we're in the middle of this. Okay. And, but mm. see the, the spirit that came, the devil's religious spirit, right? So he comes to them and he pretends he's trying to help you. Oh, I want you to be more like God, but you know, you can't really trust God. So you got to trust me. Right. So he's trying to give them a way to get an identity that they already had. So religion and politics market to you a false identity to, Thank you. to, to try to make you something that you don't think you are, but you are already a son or daughter of the most high God. Behold, what manner of love the father's bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. One John three. So that's who we are. And if we see that, then we begin to see others that were created in his image. There's only one Imago Dei. There's only one image in which we were created. And we have a unity that's, that's people in the poorest parts of the world love their children like we do. Yes, and they want yes. the best for them. And so we buy one of these false identities. And then we, we try to relate to God with a false identity and we compare ourselves among ourselves or unwise. You know, we, we try to climb some ladder. When I was young, I was telling you, I was, the, I mean, I thought I was doing really well on that, you know, and then I, I saw some things that I knew just weren't right. And I said, if then, then that's who I am, if I participate in this, you know, and so I had to get out <clears throat> and, if, if you're good at it and you don't have some tra something traumatic happen, it's just hard to ever get out, you know, and same with politics. True. There are people now who will, they don't look at what the issue is. They don't look at what's going on. They just, you know, they just, that's, I'm this or I'm that, right? And I don't want to get into any partisan stuff, but it's like we are sold a false identity exactly. where we're, but we have to see that, <clears throat> whether they're this religion or that political thing, we all are trying to do the same thing. We're all trying to live happy, normal lives. We're all trying to love our children. We're all trying to, if we're older, we're trying to be better parents than we were when we were young and, and make up for the mistakes that we did and, and try to love our children. We're all, we come from love. We're returning to love. And in the middle, we are learning to love. And sometimes we don't realize how much we need to learn to love until we're a little You are. I'm sorry. I got to flash it. You're preaching my message. I just got to flash it. Okay. <laughs> You're just preaching my message. Uh, Keep going. Keep that's going. awesome. I have to, I have to get that, but. Oh, no, no, babe. I'm sorry. I'm sending it to you. So just, you need to give me your address. There's no way you're going to, I'm going to make you love. Get one. Love is not the, the soft fluff of the gospel. The love of God is the power of the gospel. And when, you know, part of the, the, the pain of Calvinism is that um, it makes something other than the love of God the most important thing about God. Exactly. You know? And uh, is justice or sin that has to be punished. Out of right. Anyway. You see, yeah. they present a God who is not really the top of the spiritual order. Um, they think he has to go to sin court or to some God named justice to get permission to love you. And I've, I've heard young evangelists say this. Well, I, if God doesn't punish sin, then I don't want to have anything to do with that God. You know, blah, blah, blah. And you say, careful what comes out of your mouth there, brother, because it's by grace that we're all saved by faith. Through faith, rather, we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves is the gift because we're so loved. Because we're loved, it, in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And um, there's so many verses like that we used to like skip over, you know, where we have these glasses, we look at them. But as I get older, I see that's really the strength of the gospel. And my friend that 
I was telling you, I reconnected from my time in the church I was in early on, um, right out of college. Um, he said, when I heard Paul Young talk about the love of God, I realized I'd never really seen it, you know. And that's, uh, I was at another thing one time with Paul where um, somebody who was well known had had him come in. People were protesting, they were flying, and you can't have that guy in, he's a heretic, blah, 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 blah. So I went up there and I, I <clears throat> just to like, I, well, I'll keep the engine running, Paul, you know, if we gotta get out of here. Or but, uh, but, uh, what a friend. <laughs> I wanted, well, I, I, part of it was I wanted to see it, and I had been invited by someone else to be mm. part of this theology discussion. And, I, and, you know, two or three coincidences, and you go, okay, Holy Spirit, you're doing something here, I should be there, you know, so you go. But uh, after Paul spoke, this person stood up and was just weeping. And they were saying, I don't think I've ever really heard. I don't really have language for the love of God. Certainly the way that I just heard, you know. And, and then there was a missionary, 30-year veteran missionary to Europe there. And he said, uh, <laughs> he said, you know, we're going to have to go back and re-evangelize Europe because we had such a lousy gospel. And we didn't understand the love of God, you know. Yeah. And uh, so this stuff matters. People say, well, why does the gospel mm -hmm. matter? Well, the gospel matters because you become what you believe, what you behold. And we beheld some pretty bad stuff. And that's one of the reasons the church doesn't have more influence. Because it's still trying to earn its brownie points and be right and draw lines and not include people. And um, you can only get so far with that. You're basically just another religion. Maybe a little better, a little kinder than than some other religions, but it's, that's all it is. And <clears throat> Jesus said, there's I there's no power in it either. Yeah. There's no power in it. And the gospel is not just words or information or doctrine. It's power. Mm -hmm. And it accompanies the preaching of the gospel. And you see people, you begin to see genuine miracles and healings in the heart, not, in a flamboyant way that draws attention to the person ministering that, but that accompanies the gospel. Don't you feel it? Like when you're around. Yeah, it does. It, I mean, it's a byproduct, right? Yeah. It just topples out to the side while you're just preaching Jesus and the, preaching the gospel. Exactly. It's abide in the vine and you'll have some fruit, you know? And um, <clears throat> we, but we, we do need to be conscious and make a space for Holy Spirit to move. And mm -hmm. sometimes we forget to do that. But, but I think we're growing in that and we're growing yeah. in to be able to say, you know, ask Jesus if he's in there so that people get a testimony of he's actually in you. And then once and you, you see you that own personal encounter, yes. like, like everybody, if you have not done it by tonight before you go to bed, just ask Jesus if he's in there or if it's been a little while, maybe you just need to hear it again. Sometimes that's really therapeutic. I just, I know you're in there, Jesus. Could I just hear? Oh, okay. There are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brad, Brad Jerzak is really good at that and having confidence to ask oh, people that. Amazing. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's my, my four points of the gospel. And it, every time I think about it, it gets bigger, you know, and there's more in each one of those, but the gospel includes um, Jesus did something, you know, uh, Baxter jokes about, you know, Jesus didn't go back to the father and say, you know, I tried, and uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, they didn't want it. Sorry, sorry Dad. They you didn't know, want uh, it. Maybe, just... maybe I'll get it right the second time I come back. You know, yeah, but, exactly. But no, he accomplished oh something that we're still catching up to, and the church is all excited about the second coming, and they don't know what he did the first time. You know, so like maybe we should understand what he did the first time before we, we start talking about all the eschatology. Um, but, and then maybe the eschatology will make a little more sense looking like a God that actually looks like, oh, the unveiling of Christ. Come on. Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same Jesus is coming back. So mm -hmm. if you want to understand what he's going to look like when he comes back, we got to understand what he, what he looks like. When he because I change not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's my two cents on the gospel. And that's, Ooh. that's the core of, a, you know, a lot of what we teach, we teach on other things, but. The, the Holy Spirit course we did, we focused just on the ministry of Holy Spirit. And, of course, you can't talk about the Holy 
spirit without talking about Jesus and the Father because they're one, you know. And that's one of the mistakes we made in the charismatic church is we act like they're, do, right? they're not, you know, like, so you're not in Jesus and you invite Jesus in and and then uh, you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. You got the Holy Spirit and then the Father's out there somewhere and we just hope he's in a good mood, you know, and uh you know what I'm saying? So we, we separated them out and it just helped. We us. totally did. And and on top of that, the spirit comes and goes because we're not one, right? Yeah. So it's very offended, a little touchy, right? You know, yeah. So anyway, yeah. So and, you, and then uh, all sorts of bad fallout with that. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to. No, no, no. I mean, you okay. ask questions. I'm, 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 that's pretty much my, my four points on that. And um, I, don't, I don't mean to make it a sermon, but I, I think. When you begin, that to was look, a good sermon. When you get, oh no, no, no! It needed to be a sermon. You <laughs> when, needed a sermon. Sermony needed to happen. It was well, fabulous. Well, we talk a lot about this on Gan and stretch it out to like six uh, sessions, you know. So, uh, it, and that keeps growing, and, and you know, we're doing some writing on that. that will be out in the spring. And, but no, is this a book or what is it? A blog or it'll what, be, what is it'll the It'll be a, it, it'll be a book in the spring, and but uh, there's some other things in there. But um, the thing is, is, we've got to begin to see that the gospel is not this atonement theory. It's not you were out and now you're in and then you hang the certificate on the wall and everything's great. It's a relationship and it, it's a revealing of who you really are uh, from the beginning. You're a uniquely valuable person. And if anybody's watching this and they have not experienced that, I invite you, like you were saying, just ask Jesus if he's in there. And also just take another look, let Jesus reveal who he is and who you are in him and see that you always belonged, you always matter, you were always a son or daughter of the most high God and that's your truest identity. And this world, religion, politics, none of that can give you an identity greater than that. And once you begin to see that, you see the differences that you had with people uh, <clears throat> begin to go away all the tribal stuff and politics and religion and everything. Um, it really is. Jesus said, I give you my peace, right? Not as the world gives. We're not going to get peace from the world, but we can get peace from Jesus. And then we can bring our peace to the world where we go and experience it because the world needs peace, especially right now. And if you can just let him settle your heart, in love and peace and joy and all the good fruit of the spirit, then you can be an agent for change, positive change, a movement towards love and healing and all the good things wherever you go. And that's more the gospel. And, and uh, what, unfortunately, when we hear at the church, we oh, that's new age, whatever, because it's all about sin. You know? Well, sin's not the center of the universe. Sin is not the gravity that grace orbits. Sin is not a God above Jesus to which his father must report to get permission to love you. People say, well, you're not being hard on sin. There is nothing harder on sin than what Jesus did in taking all sin into himself upon the tree and dying and letting sin die once for all. Okay, he died once for all. That's it. And so sin, it has as much power as you want to give it. And the more you talk about it, the more you get. So uh, let's talk about Jesus and we'll get more of him and what he's like. Right. And, and we'll get an idea of who we are because we're in his image and likeness as he is. So are we. Yep. So yep. this is you, Jesus, in your flavor that you're expressing. Mm -hmm. And then as we see God rightly, we see ourselves rightly. We are able to... Um, to love ourselves, we're able to love one another, and it's this whole big, juicy, yummy, happy <laughs> party going on where, oh my goodness, something actually happened, and God is masterful, redeeming all things to himself, all the ugly, all the broken, all the evil, all the whatever, and he blows up in a big ball, he kisses it, he obliterates sin, and he raises us up and we can love him because he first loved us and love one another. And it is a happy camper place. Amen. That was a, that was a good gospel summary right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening. I was paying attention. I may have meditated on this a little bit. Well, it's not like it's my gospel, you know, it's, uh, it belongs to all of us. Uh, but Rod, you sum it. And is that, that is so clear. 
and graspable and expansive and beautiful. It just makes you fall in love with Jesus again. And then we can fall in love with each other because we're all family. Exactly. Exactly. And especially as uh, I think David Bowie said that growing old is the, the, uh, incredible experience of becoming who you're always supposed to be because <laughs> you, know? you kind Great of David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and uh, you know you have to you let let go of things that you thought were important and the differences that you see between you and others kind of go away and you really do see the value of love you know and um, love is isn't just a fleeting emotion it becomes uh, a person who lives in you. That's a person. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. This is so good, right? Okay. So I'm just telling you not to, you know, wrench your arm, but you're going to have to come back. Is this the thing? <laughs> so anyway, definitely would love to have you back if that works for you. I want to be oh, gracious yeah. on that. Sure. Love to. Tell me. So, okay. Everybody's loving you. I'm loving you. It's all good. We're all, it's Jesus all happy. Okay. How do, how do people connect with you? Where do they find you? Um, well, you can find some more extensive teachings. Uh, we'll be adding to our GAN channel, which is free. GAN GANTV.com. Yep. And, and she knows all about that. And she can tell you all about it. Um, and uh, we're on Facebook. We post something about the gospel every day as Rodine Williams, R-O-D-E-E-N Williams on Facebook. We're on X. And on X, we're called Delta Kinos, D E L. T A K A I N O S. That's kind of sexy there, D Delta Kinos. That sounds like a call sign, like a like a fighter pilot or something. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's two Greek it's Greek, two Greek words. Uh, uh, Delta is you know it's like where rivers meet or bringing together. Kinos is is the word for new life uh, in Second Corinthians five, where he made all things new. It's Kinos new, which means new in type and quality, not just newer version of the same thing. So it's the bringing, bringing together of things that are new. Yeah. And um, uh, we may do some more stuff with that online, that, that term online. But um, yeah, so, and you can find some of our videos out there, some really old ones on um, YouTube at Bliss Coco, B-L-I-S-S-C-O-C-O, -C -O. Oh, which basically there was a lady in our church that started videoing stuff and we were doing the church down there and different speakers we had come in. And so... These are pretty old videos, but you might find them entertaining because it's a very... And juicy. There's juicy in there. Yes, there's right. some good stuff in there. And then um, uh, we're on the uh, Rethinking God with Tacos podcast. We have an episode on yes, there. Yes, I just saw you. Yeah. That was great. And we have um, uh, Brent Locker. Uh, I forget the name of his podcast. We have an episode on there. And some other ones. There's uh, a young friend has one called um, Eat Me, Drink Me, I think it's called, or something like that. And <laughs> it's really good. Oh, and, that was just so funny. And then that John funny. has some interviews on his YouTube channel that he did with me. And um, you might want to catch, last December, we uh, John Baxter, Matt Spinks, and I did um, – an advent thing where we all spoke and those are really good videos. If you, they're up, they're up for free, I think on John's YouTube channel or somewhere. So, wow. There's so much, you're everywhere and, and um, going well, to other places, sort of. <laughs> I don't know if I'm everywhere, but I'm uh, as much as, uh, as, uh, I guess I can these days, you know, and travel. Well, now you're in Catherine Tune perspectives of Catherine Tune. You've, you've hit the pinnacle now. Okay, you can retire. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, fig I think I'm just That's figuring funny. it out. And I, I might have to retire for my retirement. I'm supposed to be retired. But uh, we're yeah. having fun and enjoying I, I ourselves. I don't think there's any hope for that. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't think there's I don't think retirement is happening. I think you're having way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I just want to say I appreciate you, Catherine, for helping make everything with GAN happen. And we now have other friends of ours who are going to be on there. I just talked with Brent Locker today, and he's going to do something on GAN. And um, and then we have some pastor friends down in Monterey that uh, oh, wow. um, the Shads are going to be doing part of their school on there. Oh, yeah, and if you 
we teach on Cana New Wine Seminary, so you could take that. Oh, that's good, guys. Got to do and, it. And we're on Dub Alexander School of the Kingdom. We do the alumni uh, course there. And, um, yeah, so there's it's an exciting time because all these people are cooperating in different configurations and constellations, and, and there's different streams coming together, uh, and people are reforming and rethinking and uh, uh, reframing how they view God. And um, it's not top-down organized. It's just happening. It's happening through relationship. And it, like it always yeah. was supposed to, I think. And it's very powerful. So, yeah, if you're, if you're not connected with that, any of those, just check them out and you'll find other people you're interested in. And, you know, uh, and I'm sure we'll do other things to purposely bring people together. So, yeah. Beautiful. It's good. Yay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This has been incredible. Oh, gosh. My heart is singing. <laughs> Jesus is singing. Let's all sing together. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. So much yummy gospel in a way that's graspable, but deep and powerful and transformative just the way it was intended. You do that so well. And you totally blessed me. Thank you for being on. Uh, you, you bless me. I see the light of Jesus and your, your smile and face there. And uh, thank you for everything that you do to help people find the gospel mm -hmm. and just keep going, you know. Oh, Appreciate it. Wonderful. <laughs> Yay. Well, this is wonderful. And I will have you back. And I'm sending you my book. So give me your address. Um, oh, sorry, that was bossy. But if that would be. A, yes, I'll, I'll send it. To, I'll, I'll send you a mailing address <laughs> when we're, we're done here. Okay. All right. Great. Sounds perfect. Well, everybody, share, share, share. People need this. People are dying for this. They're dying inside and need to be revived by this true, gorgeous, glorious message. Thank you once again for Rod. Thank you for being on. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. All right, guys. Everybody have a great day, night, whatever time you got going on. We love you. Thank you, Rod. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Well, hello, everybody. I have some exciting news. I've had so many people who love my Marked by Love book, and I have revised it. I've expanded it with all the tricky, dicey questions of what about the afterlife? What are we saved from? What are we saved to? What does salvation really mean? What does salvation, what does justice mean? What does wrath mean? What do all these scary things in the Bible that make God look like anything but love mean? I grapple with those and I give you love encounter breaks and I help you connect with who you are in the image and likeness of love. That's you marked by love before you were marred by anything else. Go get your own copy on Amazon. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Perspectives with Catherine Toon. For additional information and resources, please visit catherinetoon.com.